What I'll do, I'll just give a few words really about the origins, a few words about the potential, and then I'll talk a little bit about um, really um, how I think some of the key principles of the centre going forward, which will, I think, set it up for Anna then to talk about what we're all really work wanting to hear, which is what are we actually going to do after all this conversation. The origins, um, a bit of the origins, we're back to um, a really boring report that you've all forgotten called Ready for Aging that came out two and a half years ago, which said in short, as you know, um, that a, a transformation in the nature of our later life, offering quite remarkable opportunities for all of us. We weren't going to realise those opportunities unless there were significant changes by society, public policy and us as individuals. That's what it said in short. Two and a half years later, I don't think many of us feel anything like enough has been done on that. But one of the government's alleged responses to Ready for Aging was to say that we would have a work centre um, on ageing. And bless them, the big lottery picked up that idea. They had been working on it beforehand. And the big lottery um, ma made a clear statement that in principle they were up for endowing an independent centre as a what work centre to address how we realise the opportunity of longer lives. Well, um, I take my hat off to the big lottery in many ways for having the, the vision of the opportunity of that to set it up in that way as an independent foundation with secure funding for 10 years. And they gave us the question rather than the answer. Now that was seriously hard work, but fundamentally right. Because they basically said, this is our vague vision you convince us through a business plan as to what that would mean in practice. And thanks to, I think, a quite remarkably committed board, some of them are still alive and here, <laughs> and, um, over the last uh, 18 months or so, supported by some very good interns, uh, we developed a business plan that then led to the award of uh, the funding. But of course, that, as you know, is only the start. Probably crucially through that process was the consultations that we did um, on about three occasions with older people themselves, with those who would be older, and with very many organisations here tonight. Um, fundamentally important in making us understand where the opportunities were greatest, where the potential partnerships were, and how we therefore might, in theory at least, think about focusing our work going forward. So thank you um, again to all of you who through those many tedious conversations you had with me and others to help us really shape our thinking. The most important thing that boards ever do, of course, is find the right chief executive and support them in the right way with good governance. And I think we are pretty certain we've got that. The board is delighted that we've appointed Anna. She's only been here three months, but it feels as if she's been here about a year. And we expect this rate of speed for the rest of her tenure, don't we, Cheryl? So that, it's been a great three months, and we've made that transition, uh, a number of transitions, with others' help in a way that's been very... So she's building a great team, um, and she's got um, a lot of freedom to do so. The other thing I want to talk about um, is just to go back to what I was discussing earlier, which was the ambition of a centre at one level is completely ridiculous. For a, for a micro-organisation to say that it's going to seek to have an influence on improving well-being in later life, when that's about a third of the population, is completely bonkers, isn't it? How could you possibly think, with that sort of turnover, you could turn that big wheel? Well, at one level it is. Um, but the answer, I think, to that is that it won't be totally impossible if we actually develop how we partner with you. Because the, the level of expertise and passion and commitment and interest in that question whether it's from uh, enormously respected and powerful organisations like Age UK or ILC or specialists by business in the community or academics or a whole range of talented people here, I can't mention them. If we can find effective ways of working with you, listening to where you think we should work, but then knowing that we've got to work in resolute ways over the next 10 years to drive change. If we pull that off, then it's not such a foolish ambition. The other thing I should mention is that we're independent. It is remarkable that we should be set up in that way. Ten years secure funding so that we can um, say truth based on evidence uh, to policy makers, to the public. Um, and clearly the evidence is the foundation of all we do. But that independence allows us actually um, to say truth both to 
about today's generation and, as importantly, about future generations of older people. We've last, the five principles, I'll rattle through them, you'll see them on slides, driven by evidence. Evidence is the foundation uh, of what we do, what we bring, but it's evidence for a purpose. The goal is to bring about change, working with others to do so. Um, the independence will allow us to go into areas which need to be looked at, which are probably too hot or too difficult for others maybe to handle in time. Don't expect that immediately. We've got to find our feet. But it's a great asset to have that. And the collaboration, which I don't need to repeat, is what I said a minute ago about partnerships. Those four are fundamental principles that the board has affirmed and are part of our documentation. The fifth one um, is essentially starting with the person. And it's the most important issue of all. How we start, we're not primarily a public policy organisation, although we will go into public policy. Our focus is how do we help individuals to have a better later life? And then we go from that point onto what does that imply in terms of changes. And so um, consulting with and listening to older people and having that embedded in our work is fundamental as we go forward. But it also led to us realising we had to capture the evidence of how older people define well-being in later life. And James Goodwin helped with that on us 18 months or so ago. But we then asked Ipsos Mori to work with us over the last six or nine months to go into detail on how can we really unpack what makes for a better later life, uh, put in my language, who is happy and who is not in later life, and what seems to determine whether people are happy or not in later life. 